U.S. Marines strike back in their first offensive of the Pacific War. Their objective, a remote island unheard of by the American people. In horrific conditions, they fight a six-month campaign of attrition against an army many think is invincible. The only way you learn that they're there is when the lead guy on the patrol drops with a bullet. What goes down here will decide the fate of the Pacific War. They're coming up shouting, you know, and we just mowed them down. The rivers ran red with blood. High above the island of death fly aerial reconnaissance missions, their cameras capturing the conflict below. After the war's end, many of these photographs were lost or forgotten. Until now. For the first time, these images give an unprecedented look into the Pacific hell that is Guadalcanal. D-Day, 6.51 a.m. The first American invasion force of the Pacific War gathers off the coast of Guadalcanal. Over 19,000 young Marines prepare for what many regard as mission impossible against the Japanese. You had a lot of people who very silently saying prayers going in, and I'm sure that I was one of them. The primary mood was a move of concern and apprehension. I wouldn't describe it as fear, but we, we had a great respect for their capabilities. It is eight months to the day since the Japanese raid on Pearl Harbor, marking the beginning of an ocean blitzkrieg across the Pacific. The rapid Japanese advance is driven by brilliant tactics and a willingness to die for their cause. We had been pretty well orientated on ship about the Japanese philosophy. We knew that essentially the emperor was considered a god. We knew that there'd be very little surrender in that regard because that was considered the ultimate disgrace. We knew that they were going to be ferocious and that they were going to fight to the death, but we just felt that uh, we were superior. We were United States Marines. There was so much anger there that if they want to die, you know, for their emperor, we'll accommodate them. The tropical island of Guadalcanal is 90 miles long and 25 miles wide. Part of the Solomon's chain, it is at the farthest limit of the Japanese advance in the South Pacific. On July 17, 1942, a single B-17 bomber flies over the island on one of the most important aerial reconnaissance missions of the Pacific War. Photographs taken during this sortie confirm the worst fears of the U.S. High Command. The Japanese have begun construction of an airfield. Planes based here could attack crucial Allied shipping routes and halt any fight back in the area. The Americans must take Guadalcanal before the airfield becomes operational. This photograph reveals that only the northwest corner of the runway remains to be surfaced. Throughout this campaign, aerial photographs are used to provide intelligence on enemy activity. Over 60 years later, these original high-resolution images have been layered over a three-dimensional contour map, creating a unique perspective on the battle below. Stage by stage, the battle for Guadalcanal can be tracked from the air. D-Day, 9 a.m. As the landing force moves closer to shore, the Marines prepare to hit the beaches. Luckily, 
the Japanese didn't know we were coming. And we got ashore before a shot was fired. We didn't run into any opposition on the beach, none whatsoever. And I think that kind of was a come surprise to us. And we 17 and 18 years old, that probably come as a disappointment to us. Now we did run into the opposition later on and very, very heavily. After the heavy pre-invasion bombardment, the Japanese defenders have retreated into the jungle. But nearby, it would be a very different story. 20 miles north of Guadalcanal, a specialized landing force is tasked with the capture of a small island group. Their main objective is Tulagi, the location of the Japanese headquarters in the area. It must be captured and held. The most aggressive and best trained Marines are assigned this dangerous mission. We heard sporadic firing going from the Higgins boats into the beach. We had no idea how many Japanese troops were ashore. As the raiders move inland, they come face to face with an elite enemy force. We found out later they were Sendai, roughly equivalent to our Marine Corps. They were Naval Special Landing Force troops, and they were quite good. It was some of the roughest fighting that one can ever imagine. And these were young Americans, some 18, 19 years old, barely out of high school. It was the initiation into the Pacific War, which was a brutal war to the end. The Marine advance across the two-mile-long island becomes a bloody slog as the Japanese mount a lethal defense. We started taking a lot of fire, and it looked like the fire was going to keep us there for a while. So I told them to hold still, give me some coloring fire. I went roaring up there, and there were spurts of dirt all behind me. I got up to a position and hosed down the hillside on the opposite side. I turned to look back to the patrol to wave them forward. They were gone. They'd gone the other direction. I was out there all by myself. Lesson learned there. <laughs> For 12 hours, the Japanese Sendai defend from dugouts and tunnels. As night falls, combat jitters turn to sheer terror. It was pretty frightening because it was an absolutely pitch black night. There was no starlight, no moon. But every now and then there would be a Japanese attack and they really came at us from every direction. I don't think I was the model of courage right then and there. Across the water, the impenetrable darkness is equally terrifying for the young recruits on Guadalcanal. The dominant thing about the end of the first day was the danger of being shot by your own troops. You've got several thousand teenagers ashore. None of them have ever been in combat before. They're all armed. They're all nervous. Every time a coconut fell, there was an eruption of fire. Everybody on the line is shooting blindly into the jungle. One Marine got hit, so we had one casualty due to our own ineptness. At the end of day one, over 10,000 Marines are ashore on Guadalcanal. Tomorrow, they must advance toward the key airfield, capture it, and prepare for a Japanese counterattack. The long struggle to win the Battle of Guadalcanal is about to begin. Guadalcanal, day two. The U.S. fight back in the Pacific has begun. 
Aerial photographs of this tropical island revealed the objective.